to behind the scenes, where I will be showcasing the making of a map part for a lab art star multi-animator project, This Is Me. I have wanted to do a behind the scenes video for a while now, and as I happen to get more than one version of the storyboard, I decided to give it a shot. When people show their progress shots, more often they don't go into what was their thought process behind certain scenes. Instead, we are often shown various work in progress shots, and that's about it. With this video, I want to dive deeper into my animation process, and how I think and make decisions regarding an animation I happen to work on. This is something I hope to make into more regular series. If there is something you would like me to do differently, or suggest some improvements, feel free to do so in the comments below. Something I forgot to do for this one is to include more recordings of the process, so I apologize for repetitive visuals. I hope you will find this entertaining and even interesting regardless. As the animation I am set out to do is a map part, by length, it isn't really that long. My part is approximately 10 seconds long, which is usually the average length when it comes to multi-animator project parts. Maps often come with a set of rules and design references that have to be followed throughout the process. It is always important to read them carefully before starting on your part. The majority of maps nowadays rely on telling a story, so reading rules and the script is crucial in order to achieve a good ending result. Leopard Star This Is Me map was originally posted by Brownie Cat in 2018 and was later rehosted by Kim Shiny earlier this year, 2020. I have seen this project being open since day one, and I originally asked to be a backup, as I didn't have much time to start processing on new map parts around the time the original video was uploaded. Sadly, I did forget about its existence, but as Kim Shiny rehosted this map, I knew I had to give it a chance it deserves. Leopard Star was one of my favorite side characters in the original series, so seeing that she was about to get her recognition that she deserved, I couldn't say no for the opportunity. I asked primarily for part 20, but for part 19 as a backup choice. I ended up getting what I originally wanted, so that was very nice. <laughs> but because I was so wrapped around with the idea that there is walking on the previous part, I subconsciously mixed up the script of part 20 and part 19, and this was the end result. <laughs> you can hear the audio, but basically the first section, this is sprayed, this is bruised, I had storyboarded it to be a walking cycle, which has nothing to do what I'm supposed to do. Thankfully, I realized my mistake before I showed a rough track to the host, but gosh, wasn't I embarrassed. So take it from me, read that script at least three times before settling down to do your work. Don't mess it up like me. This is the actual storyboard, and it worked out much better for me in the end. Since Leopard Star was supposed to just chill and lay down while lip syncing, my main objective was to get the emotion and atmosphere right, as the movement is quite simple for this animation. Before we move on to keyframes, let me show how I included traits of Leopard Star's design reference into my own style. Here is the redesign of Leopard Star by Kim Shiny, who later clarified that the more simple design with solid black dots is to be followed. This design is based on the original design by Proudy Cat, which included much more detail than Kim Shiny's version. The main challenge I had was how I am going to include Leopard Star's hair, as drawing hair on Warrior Cat characters is a bit foreign for me. I don't mind that others do it. Sometimes it is very cool to see what everyone come up with design-wise. But as I don't really specialize in different kinds of hairstyles, this was definitely an interesting challenge to deal with. In Kim Shiny's redesign, they had simplified the original hair design, so I decided to take that kind of approach. I made the fur on top of Leopard Star's head thicker to represent some kind of hair, 
and tried to make it so that the star on her forehead could be visible nearly all the time. Her tail was presented to be slim with a bit rougher fluff at the end of it, so I did the same. Then as her chest and the rest of the body were presented to quite short fur, I decided to give her some sass by adding longer hair at the back of her neck. While the neck fluff gives me some rockstar vibes, I feel like it oddly enhances Leopard Star's personality. Usually, with female characters, I like to draw lashes. In the majority of the drawings that I do, I commonly draw two lashes, but this time I wanted to try something different. I gave Leopard Star a singular longish lash, but I decided to divide the tip of it. That detail is very subtle, and probably not that recognizable, but I'm happy with my silly experiment, and perhaps in the future I will play with it more often. Once I had tweaked her design just so, I moved on to sketching out the keyframes. The characters on the final Star Clan shot are designs provided by Nifty Senpai. We were told to follow her designs for other characters that didn't have a pre-made design for this map. I think this is actually the very first time I have tried my hand at her designs, so it was fun to try out such a variation with different body shapes. From keyframes, I moved to in-betweens, and from there to the cleanup. The lip syncing went quite smoothly. I can't say I had any particular difficulties getting it done. I would say my favorite words to lip sync were pray, Bruce, and the little inhale before Leopard Star says the final this is me. While sketching the body movement onto a separate layer from lip syncing, I ended up doing the line art onto the same layer as the rest of the movement. But as Leopard Star had some parts that barely moved, such as her front and hind legs, I did them onto two other layers, judging whether they were behind the animated layer or on top. For example, in the shots 1 and 2, the left hind leg is thrown on its own layer that has been placed on top of the layer where the animated frames are. This way I also saved some time so I didn't need to start drawing the body part over and over again. Moving on to the coloring. I really enjoy designs that got some detail to them. What I absolutely love about this Leopard Star design is the fact that she has white rings at the back of her ears. That detail is quite minor, but I think it adds more interest to the character design. While I would have loved to dive deep with the detail of the original design, I'm grateful that Kim Shiny told us to stick to the simplified version with the spots being plain black without extra detail. The spots were easy to count and place to the parts of the body the reference sheet had them on. After coloring all the frames, I moved to work on the backgrounds. The reason why I'm doing backgrounds first before shading and other color effects is that I need some kind of reference for the light source. I also need to figure out the color palette that I could potentially use to overlay Leopard Star's reference sheet colors with, and thus make her blend more into her surroundings without sticking out too badly. For the Moonstone Cave background, I took some references from part 18 that has been finished a while ago. If I can find the original part, I will put it into the iCard above. On that part, the animator had used blue hues for their grays, so I decided to go with it as well. I tried to achieve a cool and calm environment, as the part of the song is quieter before the matches stick, look out cause here I come. The only source of light is from outside of the cave, that signs upon the moonstone, so that also helped to achieve calmer environment. For the game setting, I did the shading with cold dark blue and overlaid the rest of the colors with grey easter couch. The eye highlights are done with light blue to continue reflect the cool, calm environment. Then on the Star Clan, and oh boy, didn't I have a blast with this one! I dare to argue that StarClan is very commonly imagined with hues of blue and purple, heavenly pale and cool colors. The final shot of my part opens with more powerful music, 
So I decided to go completely against the Star Clan stereotype and add a sunset and bright colors to reflect the majestic theme. The sunset in the background opens the possibility for beautiful, vibrant hues of green and pinkish orange, and that is what I decided to roll with. I love to design Star Clan this way and use brighter colors to visually suggest how remarkable this moment is. In the script of this map, this scene is noted as an action that shows Leopard Star is coming to reclaim her rightful place as River Clan's leader and showing Star Clan that she is indeed capable to do her job. I don't know how many actually picked up on this, and I don't blame anyone for not spotting it, but I decided to draw oaks and kind of aspens to the Star Clan background. If you pause at the final scene after the tomb out, you can see that I added a few oak leaves just above the part star. This is completely meaningless detail, but I thought it would be fun to experiment with different tree types for this part instead of going with the general tree design that I very commonly use. For Star Clan, I overlaid Leopard Star's colors with golden yellow and did the shading with purple. The eye highlights are this time a bit more yellowish to convey a warmer environment and atmosphere. And that's it! This was the entire process I went through when working on Leopard Star Map Part 20. In total, this took two weeks of working time. I had a three-day break in between the process, but if we disregard that, I spent two weeks in total with this. Two weeks is definitely a quite good achievement with animation that is 10 seconds long, but keep in mind that this map part had very subtle movements. If this animation had included full body action movements, it could have easily taken me two months to finish, as opposed to two weeks. If you haven't seen my part yet, or want to give it a rewatch, you can check it out at the end card. Once the final map is posted, I will also include that as part of the end card. But for now, you can find the map call in case you're interested to check it out. Thank you so much for watching! Don't forget to check out the original host and re-host. Both of them are very talented creators and definitely deserve to be recognized. Their links will be in the description. Stay safe and have a good day or night!